Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 17 through 24. The Reverend Doug Gribbenau is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from 1 Kings chapter 17, beginning at verse 17. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. And his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. And he said to her, Give me your son. And he took him from her arms and carried him up into the upper chamber where he lodged, and laid him on his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I sojourn by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah. And the life of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. O Lord, have mercy on us. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How often it seems that this happens. Things are going well. Things are going really well. And then something happens, and it's awful. In fact, we probably feel that it is even more awful because, by comparison, things were going so well, and now it is the worst thing ever. And it drives us to doubt, to despair, to ask why. As we heard on Friday, it it engenders within us worry. This widow, as we heard last week, had encountered Elijah, and she was gathering sticks. Not very many because she didn't need many. Just enough for one last fire, to mix with one last piece of flour, with one last drip of oil, to make one last meal that she and her son could eat it and die. She spoke this declaration to Elijah, almost passionless it seems in the text. This is what we are going to do. This is our lot. I'm resigned to it. But the Lord had compassion on her through Elijah And he said, do as you said, but first, bake me a cake and bring me some water. And until the day comes that the Lord will bring rain upon the earth, that little jar of flour, that little vial of oil, they shall not run out. And so it was that the widow and her son ate for many days. She rejoiced a reprieve from what she thought was her fate. Now, like many of us, as we come through tragedy in this life, as we are delivered, we rightly then turn to our Heavenly Father and we say, thank you. Unbelievers, too, as they experience God's benefits and care for them as the Heavenly Father cares for all creation, are left with rejoicing and say thank you, though they may not know 
to whom that thanks should go. Based on what we hear today, I would wager that this widow is in that latter category. She rejoiced and gave thanks, but she did not know necessarily to whom this joy should be directed. But we who know of God's promises, who have been called to faith by the gospel with the Holy Spirit to bring us to faith in Christ Jesus, we know for certain that we have a heavenly Father. And he gives us all that we need to preserve this body and life, and it is indeed our duty, our obligation, our great joy to thank and praise Him, to serve and obey Him. But so often in this life, that fades, and in times of plenty, in times of security, our eyes turn away from God and start to go about our daily lives. I remember in my youth, because this took a long time ago, September 11, 2001. It feels like yesterday. That first Sunday, the second Sunday, the third, the fourth Sunday after September 11, 2001, my little home congregation in Denver, Colorado, was packed to the gills. People had been touched by God's discipline, by His wrath, by the fallenness of this world, by evil. And they turned to the one who would give them relief, who promised them forgiveness and life and salvation in Jesus. And after weeks and weeks, the pews started to empty, and life returned to normal. How often we sometimes believe that as we are given great and good benefits in this world, that somehow actually we, we deserve them. And maybe it has less to do with God and more to do with something we've done. That we are blessed by God because we're good, we're wise, we're shrewd, we do and care for good things. We deserve this. And then when tragedy strikes again, this false faith shatters. This woman has now been encountered with a great tragedy. And she is right to observe that sin is the result, or that, that death is this result of sin. Sin has caused her son to die. In a very broad sense. We're not told the cause of this young man's death, simply that he died. The widow posits that it is because of her sin. Her sin has brought this upon her son. Her sin has brought this death on her son because this prophet has come to remind her of her sin, to punish her for it, to make her pay for it by taking the last vestige of joy in her life. Having lost her husband, she now loses her son and loses all sense of her world. She is right that death is the result of sin. But for her to suppose that it was her sin, as one of my professors would say, that is probably the wrong question or in this case, the wrong answer to the question. Sin is so pervasive, and indeed, when we sin, we incur punishment on ourselves. We're still punishment on others. Or sometimes it is the sin of another that brings pain and tribulation in our lives. And sometimes it is the fallen nature of the world. But the Lord uses each and every one of these things for His good and gracious will. 
He permits wickedness and evil in this world, but it is not to be rampant and run its course, destroying and devouring everything in its path. God is not the source of it, but he compels it to bring forth something good. And so it was in this case. The woman's son has died. And she comes to Elijah. And Elijah is the agent of our Heavenly Father. God has compassion. Elijah prays that the Lord would restore the life of the child. He took the lifeless boy in his arms, carried him to his room, to his own bed. And with fervent prayers, the Lord has mercy. He brings the young boy down and says, See, your son lives. The widow then is filled with truth. She comes to saving faith because now she has recognized and knows to whom she must give thanks and why. She says, now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord, that is the one true living God, the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. The Lord used the death of her son to bring her to saving faith. It is a foreshadowing of the death of God's own son, his only son, that he would suffer and die on the cross to bring each and every one of us to saving faith, to faith in him, he who grants us freely from God's own heart of love, the forgiveness of sins and life and salvation. Now you and I may not in our own tribulations and troubles of this world encounter such a direct, miraculous revelation through Elijah in your home. But we have a great witness. The Word of God written for us for blessed are those who have seen and believed. But blessed are those who have not yet seen and still believe. For you and I have the word of God, that his own son has been raised up, and that you and I no longer need fear death, Death that comes in this world as a result of sin, but death that has now been transformed. For the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And death for us now. We who have been joined to the death and resurrection of Jesus in the waters of holy baptism, that death is now the gateway to life everlasting through faith in God's own Son. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And by his speaking, we know that the word of the Lord is true. For the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God is promised to you in holy baptism stands forever. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.